Hello and welcome to a special episode of the In The Game podcast. I'm your host, Brian Clinton, Managing Editor over at HeartlandCollegeSports.com. We got a doozy for you today. Matt Brown of ExtraPoints.com is here and uh, he's going to do an interview with us. We're going to talk about a lot of things college football 25 related, uh, get into some specifics and some things that that EA Sports is is doing to make this game hopefully one of the best sports games we've seen in a long, long time and the first college football video game we've seen in a long time. So without further ado, let's get to that interview. Welcome to our exclusive interview with Extra Points publisher, Matt Brown. Matt, thank you so much for being on with us. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great. It's uh, It's been a slightly busier past week or so than I think I'm, I'm used to around this type of time of year, but those are those are good problems to have. It's a, it's a pleasure to not be bored. It's a pleasure to be on the forefront of, of a thing that a lot of people care about here, and I'm, I'm happy to be chatting about it with you. Yeah, it's it's incredible just how different the college football calendar looks uh, in the grand scheme of things. There is no such thing as an off season anymore with the transfer portal, with NIL, and of course this year we have uh, college football twenty five to talk about, which has just been a major headline the last couple of weeks, the last two Thursdays as far as Twitter is concerned, or X, what are we calling it now? Either way, I'm, I'm calling it Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, uh, whatever your prerogative is on that, either way, the last two Thursdays has been all about uh, college football 25. Last week, uh, it was about the, uh, the EA Sports NIL offers going out officially to colleges around the country. Uh, Matt, you were, you were one of the first guys or not the first guy to, to report on these things going out and and uh, what have you heard? What's the latest on all of that? Uh, and and where is this thing looking as far as EA is concerned? Yeah, I, I you know from talking to various school based personnel, I can I don't mind sharing that the attitude among athletes has been nearly uniformly positive. You know, and I've talked to uh, to administrators who have said, you know, shoot, it's been like two or three days, and we have. 70 plus people on our roster already signed up. We have 60 plus people already signed up. I think there was a, a VP at EA who tweeted less than 24 hours after the initial offer that they already had 5,000 people. I'm sure the number is, is north of six now, which would be more than half of, of what EA needs to be. There, there has been some frustration and consternation on the school side. And as some of the multimedia rights partner side, which is deep inside baseball nerd stuff. If you're, if you write about the industry, it may be a little bit less interesting to, um, to consumers, but even though there have been a few activists, there's been a few agents that have tried to push back on this deal. And, and we can talk about the, the pros and cons of this kind of deal from the athlete perspective. It's been uniformly positive because this was one of the things that has a, really a deep emotional impact to mm. so many athletes in a way that even many more lucrative NIL deals don't. Like people want the truck. They're not going to give the truck back. They want the check. The check influences where they go. But when they were in high school, they didn't necessarily dream about the truck. They dreamed about being in the game. And, 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 and that, you know, that's, that sense that's already a part of their life. And now that there's a pathway for that to happen, it's going to be very exciting for many, many people. So is that where, where most athletes, if not all, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen, any reports of anybody opting out to this point, and I'm sure there ha there's been some, um, but is that just, is that the feeling? Is that the sentiment is just guys are just excited to be a part of the game. I, I know that some of these guys, it's been 10 years, it's been a decade since we've actually played a new release, but uh, you know, we all grew up playing this game is something everybody's been looking forward to. Is it the sentiment that most everybody is just going to sign up just for the fact that they could be part of the group that brought this game back? That is what I've been hearing so far. I mean, I, I don't think it's reasonable to expect all 11,000 plus people are going to be in immediately at launch, even setting aside whatever legal question marks may end up coming up with mm -hmm. the Service Academy players. And, and the reason for that, Brian, it isn't so much that there's going to be large numbers of people that are going to opt out. There probably will be a couple. But there's going to, it's more likely that people are just going to forget to sign the form, right? I keep telling everybody we're mm. dealing with college students. We're dealing with college student males uh, and, and an app that is 
not part of the daily you know conversation or things that people use uh, uh, all the time already right and so yeah people are just going to forget if they don't right. do it immediately and, and then they're going to be like oh my gosh now it's june and and please can i can i the developers add me in the in the next patch <laughs> right you're you're going to you're going to end up seeing a little bit of that but you know if you're, the athletes on the very high end like the, the people that that could potentially say i'm worth more than $600 you know dozens and dozens of them are going to be eligible for ambassador contracts where EA will enter into a separate agreement with them to pay and promote the game on social media and pay them substantially in excess of $600. I know I've, I've seen th those aren't the same standardized contract, but the, the values there range in the, the mid to high four figures to, to the low five figure ranges, um, which might be more in line with somebody who's potentially competing for the Heisman Trophy would be mm. pushing for. So like they're, they're still going to be taken care of um, I imagine this deal will look different in a few years after there's a union or a trade association negotiating on behalf of the athletes. And also once EA really understands how much money this game is going to make, then I, I think you'll see things differently. This is one of the biggest misconceptions that I see among fans, because if you're my age or if you're your age, and if you're in a, if you're in Stillwater or Norman or Dallas or some of these places where college football is like a civic religion. The idea that this game would not make a billion dollars doesn't make sense because you're like, I'm going to play it. I'm going to pay 70 bucks for it. And so will everybody that I know, of course, this is going to be very popular. But historically, this game has sold between a third and a quarter of what Madden does. And the financial analysts that I've, I've spoken to over the last month have told me that they expect you know, something closer to 20 to 25% of Madden's total revenue would be considered a success for this game. Like you, it, it's hard to overstate how much more popular the NFL is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's hard to ex totally financially project what the total sales of this will be. We don't really know uh, how much money is out there in DLC or in ultimate team tokens. Like we know for Madden, because we've been doing this for a couple of years. We don't know exactly what the casual fan, the non-college football sickos response to this game is going to be. Once we have better data, I think you will probably see athletes making more than 600 bucks and a copy of the game for this game. But for now, there's not a lot of interest in letting perfect be the enemy of good. I think you're seeing way more excitement than you are consternation. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. And there's a couple of things there that you, you had my mind going a little bit on, on, on a couple of things. First, I thought it was very interesting that we we heard that this game is kind of the foundation. They're laying the foundation. They they made this game uh, from scratch, essentially. Uh, you know, they're, it's still functioning on on the Frostbite uh, engine that that uh, Madden has been built with. But uh, as you've pointed out in previous stories, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a copy uh, of the Madden game. So. Mm -hmm. Whenever it comes to starting this game from scratch, what? Why did EA take that approach? Does it feel like they're making it a point that this game is not going to be the Madden reskin that everybody is so afraid of, where we see um, microtransactions become just such a huge part of the game uh, that, that people really have been turned off from the franchise in the past couple of years? So. Uh, is there is there good is there good uh, good news on that part on that part for for college football fans? So I think that's a multifaceted question. And let me let me try to explain that the best that I can. Uh, for one, I think that there's a lot of misconception about what it means to use the same engine when you're developing mm -hmm. a a video game. Right, an engine it can be used for a lot of different kinds of products. Like, yes, Frostbite is the, is the, the, so, the engine, which, you know, the, the, the software development suite and tools that was used to, for Madden. It was also used for PGA. Uh, it's also been used for Battlefield. I think it was yeah. used for Plants vs. Zombies. It's been used for a ton <laughs> of different games that have nothing to do with football. And that's right. very common, right? If you go upstairs or you, you go to your PlayStation, you go to your Xbox and you look through there, like, how many of my games used Unreal? How many of my games used Unity? How many of my games used some of these similar software tools? And you're going to find that there's a lot of similarities that completely span genres, right? You can make all kinds of games and all kinds of engines. I I, uh, I made a computer game that that we sell on, on Extra Points called Athletic Director Simulator. That's a text adventure game a, a sim and business simulator. And we mm -hmm. built that with an engine that mostly makes 2D scrollers. Um, so... I, I don't think you can read too much into anything when you hear Frostbite. What's more important is 
the code that's built upon Frostbite. Yes. Obviously, you are going to use some parts, components of Madden for, for efficiency's sake. But as many developers have, have you know, reminded me, you can't just do a carbon copy because the football is literally not the same game. The rules are different. The mm -hmm. playbooks are different. And more importantly, the diversity in playbooks are very different compared to professional football. You have to use different animations. You have different clock rules. They're very similar, but you can't do a carbon copy because they're literally not. And then when you get, of course, into the actual like, or, you know, roster management and day-to-day and -day experience of, of running a college football program, it couldn't be more different than the NFL. Uh, so you can't replicate those particular things. And I, I would tell people it's not an accident that this game isn't called NCAA football to that, you know, 25, all of the, or almost all of the old college football games were called NCAA football. I actually have the OG one right here yeah. on the Sega Genesis. <laughs> you know, we had the Bill Walsh college football here for That's a minute. Awesome. And, and then you kind of, you, you, you change over. So what, what people have said on the developer and on the PR comm side at EA to me, and I've, I've even heard this from like licensing professionals is that that's not an accident. And you really only get one chance to make a first impression. And, and this particular game, EA Sports College Football 25, is being perceived and, and internally you know, uh, branded as new IP. It's not meant to be a one-to-one -one continuation of the last games. It's a new thing. And if you want to make it a new thing, you have to build it from the ground up. I think a lot of fans just kind of assume that you could just control C everything in NCAA Football 14 Control V into the new computer, hit three buttons to upgrade it from the 360 to the, the <laughs> PS5, and you're done. And like what everyone's told me is like, it doesn't work that way. N literally none of the code, none of the audio, none of the assets, none of the anything from the last college football game can be used in this game. The people who wrote it aren't there anymore. The, the architecture has to be different because that was two video game systems before. Yeah. Got to throw it all in the trash. So, so what, what, I, what I tell people is I cannot promise you that the game will be perfect or even necessarily good, right? I own many EA games. Some are excellent. Some are extremely not. And I understand why many consumers don't want to give EA the benefit of the doubt. I'm not really a big Madden guy, so I can't, I can't speak to the specific drawbacks of, 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 of that series, but I understand that there's a lot of fan frustration with it. But what I, what I tell everybody is that whether this game is good or bad, it will be good or bad on its own merits and not be good or bad for exactly the same reason uh, as, as Madden. Now, to, to, to your last point here, which I also think is important, if your concern about Madden is with microtransactions, the engine has nothing to do with that. Like that's also – that's a, 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 in part a corporate decision. And my understanding yeah. is you know, from playing other EA sports games is that microtransactions and like buying points for packs is more of an ultimate team experience. And if you want to be an elite – you know, nationally competitive ultimate team player, whether that's in Madden or FIFA or NHL or in NBA 2K, different company, but similar thing, you pretty much are going to have to pay. But if you are mostly playing in single player experience or playing online with friends, whether that's franchise mode or create a player or many other things in other games, you generally don't really need to pay. You, you can, you can use that as a shortcut. You can use that mm -hmm. to, for enhanced cosmetic options, but you, you can have a positive single player experience without having to pay anything. Um, and you know, given that for college football, the primary game mode is dynasty rather than ultimate team. I would be surprised if your dynasty experience for the typical player was going to be sullied by an overabundance of microtransactions. Um, there is going to be an ultimate team mode. I'm sure there's going to be opportunities for digital downloads elsewhere here, but it would, based on my conversations, I would be surprised if it was a, if the, if that, that, those things that concerned you about other games were exactly the same, at least at launch in college football 25. Yeah, I know that's good. That's music to some people's ears because, you know, there's, there's at least friends in, in my group that have said, oh, I can't wait until uh, my star quarterback going into to year two of the dynasty demands eight dollars of my actual money uh, for me to stick for them to stick around. So yeah. hopefully uh, that's not the case. Uh, would be really disappointed if it was. But uh, as far as what we have seen from from EA Sports and some of the things that came out last week, one of the things that really stuck with me was was Chris Fowler's uh, a video he released where he could finally talk about some of the things that that ea has been demanding or or has wanted as he's recorded some of these audio bites over the last couple of years and 
they they really seem to be hammering home the game day experience, like really trying to encapsulate a college football uh, game. And so not necessarily in virtual form, but they're, they're trying to make it feel like you're actually in the swamp playing against the Gators or you're actually in Beaver Stadium playing against Penn State on a whiteout night. Like it, it, it has that that feel as if that's that's been the, the focus Whenever you talk about or whenever you, you've spoken with people at EA, what, what are some things, what are some of the more interesting things that have caught your mind whenever it comes to them really putting an emphasis on, on capturing that, that game day feel? Yeah, I, I think that has been perhaps the dominant thrust of my reporting about this project for the last two years. Um, you know, listening to the Fowler bit here, I, real quick, I, I have to, I have to confess, I was a little surprised to see so many people freaking out. In part because I don't Fowler, not Fowler specifically, but I had already reported that most of those people were going to be in the game because mm. I, I've covered a college game day event like last year, and just asked like, "Hey Desmond, are you are you going to be in the game?" He's like, "Yes, I've been recording like audio for a while." <laughs> and then some ESPN PR person's like, "No, no, no, he didn't say that." I'm like, "Yes, he did." You know, <laughs> Herb Street has had confirmed this right like david pollock mm-hmm. had confirmed this um and when i asked i remember when i asked fowler about it he was very professional but with his facial expressions like made it abundantly clear like i the answer that you want is not the answer i can give you because there's a pr staffer right here but like use your brain right um what what ea has asked schools every fbs institution for over the last year and a half is an extensive amount of information which they want to use to make the game day pageantry as unique to that institution as possible. So the first thing that they asked for, like very early in the process, because this is a very technically demanding thing to do, has been for the information they need to render their stadium in the the four, you know, the the highest level of graphic resolution possible right now. And so that requires literally hundreds of photographs from every conceivable angle within within a stadium. It also includes photographs of the locker room, the tunnel leading out of the stadium, photographs of iconic monuments or buildings throughout the stadium, like on the exterior, whether that's you know the alligator statues in front of Ben Hill, whether that's the mountains behind BYU, whether that's you know um, the moral towers behind Ohio Stadium with the, the, the two gigantic dorms in the background, all of those things, right? And they've mm-hmm. also asked schools that like, because many of them were in the middle of like facility renovations when this was happening. They're like, if you can't get a photog- photographer in there, or if you got like construction crap in the way, send us the artist renderings of the stadium. Send us the blueprints. Send us what this is supposed to look like. We're smart. We can figure it out. And that's, I mean, that, Kansas doesn't, doesn't even have a football stadium this year. And like right. they gave EA the data to render their new stadium or what the stadium's going to look like, right? I believe Vanderbilt, I, I believe, has, has, has done something pretty similar. So you have that. Then you have EA saying, we also want every audio file we can possibly get that accurately depicts your full game day experience. And so by that, I mean, if your school plays various songs or sounds in pregame, we want those. If your school plays a certain sound effect on third down or after a first down, we want that. If you do something between the third and the fourth quarters, we want that. We don't just want your fight song. Well, we, we obviously want that. We want the other things that the band plays all the time. Um, I can confirm that Oklahoma did, in fact, submit things besides Boomer Sooner, um, although that <laughs> is on there quite a bit, right? Like, and, and so you have all of those. And then it's like, hey, what are the student chants? And what are the student chants that aren't R-rated? Because we can't put in like, exactly what LSU fans say during Nick, but we could put in Nick. Um, you know, those kind of things. Right. And, and the, 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 yeah, the schools were also told, give us the stuff that you don't even have the license for, because we have some mm. money to pay for some of this stuff. We can't promise we're going to put everything in the game. We're not going to license every single, um, you know, third party song. We can kind of make that editorial distinction, but give us all of that information. Then they said, just didn't give us a bunch of images of like tracking shots around campus or interesting photos from your archives or from your team's history. So we can use these for loading screens. They asked for um, rivalry games, including ones that, that, that have trophies and rivalries that may have organically formed since 2014 or games that wouldn't be considered rivalries anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, So the, the, the announcers and the game presentation could, could, you know, demonstrate that, Hey, a TCU SMU game should feel different than a TCU Oklahoma state game. You know, there, there, there's some, there's some intensity behind that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they asked for roughly a kajillion uniform assets <laughs> and the amount of depth 
for a lot of these that I've inspected was pretty surprising to me because it's not just, hey, give us your home away and major alternate. That's that goes without saying, give us your three helmets, your three pants, all that stuff. But then they're saying, we also want you to give us a bunch of your historical things. Well, what, did you have an alternate that you wore six years ago twice? Do you have a throwback that you wore in the 80s that people are nostalgic for? Um, do, do you have something from the 50s, right? The, the original Ole Miss powder blues or something, you know, the, that, mm. that kind of thing. And yeah, I asked for all of this. And sometimes the schools gave it to them. And sometimes it came direct from Nike or Adidas or Under Armour. And some of that, I, I think I can say this without getting in trouble. Some of that's going to be behind a paywall. Like you're probably going to have to pay six bucks for the full uniform set. Some of that stuff is just is not going to be released yet because what EA has told schools is if you're planning on doing a fun alternate uniform this year, we won't break that news. We'll hold the asset until you release it to the public, until you wear it in a game, and then we could do an update. And then what you wore in October is in the game the next week. So then people can play with the cool uniform that you released. Um, and, 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 you know, some of that will, you will, will appear later. Some of that will be, you have to pay eight bucks. Some of that will be there at launch, but you know, you can't play an Oregon football game and only have three uniforms. No. You have to be able to have 60, right? right. If you're playing as Penn state. You're not going to get to play as something wearing pink. Like it's going to be the same thing since the paleolithic era. Like that, that's that kind of a, you know, attention to detail that I think is from what I've seen is expanded from the last couple of releases that I think people will, will be excited about. Yeah, I'm certainly excited about that. It just brings more realism to the, you know, the, the immersive experience that everybody pays for whenever they hand over $70 sure. to play the game. So that's fantastic. Um, as far as, as far as some of the other things uh, that, that we've seen and, and heard on, on this game, I, I think it's exciting to, to talk about what are, are some of the, the game modes or the specific things that, that you can expect. We obviously, we know about dynasty mode, uh, we know about um, we know about Road to Glory. One of the and this may not be a popular thing, but one of the game modes that I really enjoyed growing up was the mascot mode. I don't know if there's any confirmation or or, or anything on on that, but are there other game modes like uh, mascot mode that that um, I don't know what you're at liberty to say or not say, um, but are there other game modes like that 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 maybe bring uh, some sort of, of unique experience to this game versus uh, previous iterations? The only things that I can confirm in front of a recording microphone right now are that there is a road to glory mode, there is a dynasty mode, there is an exhibition play now mode, and there is an ultimate team mode. Um, anything else I am not allowed to share or don't know. Like le legitimately, like I, cause I get mm -hmm. asked about the mascot mode a lot. I legitimately don't know the answer to that question. Um, some of the other stuff, I just, I can't say it right now. Um, sure. sometimes because we agreed to embargoes or because it's, it's only half confirmed or left those kind of things. Those are the four I know will be in the game. Awesome. Well, um, here, here are some things that, that make me, that give me some excitement as well is in dynasty and in some of these other, other game modes, there was customization as far as conference realignment. There was customization. Uh, you know, you couldn't necessarily just throw a conference off the cliff like like pretty much what we saw happen to pin, uh, the Pac-12 here recently. But um, now it, that stuff is confirmed to be in the game uh, with the playoff. That this is one that I'm I'm a little more curious. What are your expectations as far as customization goes with the playoff? We're seeing it change to 12 teams, right? But We've also heard talks already that it could be going to 14 or 16 teams. Is there going to be some some uh, customizability when it comes to uh, playoffs, if that's something, again, that you're you're allowed to speak about? No, no the, the, the honest answer here is I, I haven't heard that, and I don't know. And those are the kind of very specific questions that generally developers are not so keen to talk about. Mm. I would say, if you're asking me to speculate, there's no talk of expanding the college football playoff for the 2024 football season, which is what this game is meant to, to originally replicate. Those are the rosters that you're using. So I would not expect playoff options that extend beyond what, what's currently there. What I can tell you, and I can't, I have to use my words carefully, right? What I can tell you is that I have seen internal documents that I promised I wouldn't explicitly one-to-one -one share the contents of. And I've talked to people on the company who have said, 
user customization and user generated content is a priority and a theme of this release. Cause I get asked questions about team builder or changing mm -hmm. uniforms or many of those other things. So while I can't specifically say team builder is in the game or that this exact customization feature is in the game, I can say user and custom content is a priority in this coming release. And whatever you want to take from that statement, it's between you and God. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully that answers some of your questions. No, that's, that's great. That's great. Um, just a couple of more here. I don't want to, I know you're a busy guy and you got lots of things going on, but an interesting uh, discussion we had before the podcast started uh, that I just, I want to, I want to <laughs> hammer out again. You became the guy whenever it comes to EA Sports, College Football 25, and breaking that that news. How did that come about? Like, when, what was the uh, what was the initial thing that happened that really uh, set this in motion for you? As far as one of the major things that you're covering from day to day. Yeah, I mean, and, and I've, I've said this before, but I'll be honest about it. It was an accident, right? Like, for for many people that only know me from talking about EA Sports College Football, I. I'm a working professional sports writer and my entire beat is the off the field stuff in college sports. So I don't really write about who wins games. I don't really write about individual recruiting battles. I certainly don't write about lines, but I write for an audience of, you know, not just fans and not just reporters, but a lot of industry people, right? A lot of athletic directors read my stuff uh, because I'm writing about things like sponsorship revenue and legal challenges and media rights valuations and, and some of the big vendors and big companies that kind of work in like, you know, college sports Inc. sort of thing, right? So I remember back in like 2021, I think, you know, we're coming out of the, the pandemic and I've been working on a story or I think a series of stories about how Modern mid-major schools are trying to find creative ways to find new revenue. And, and now this is pretty standard, but at the time it was, it was more novel to have a licensed beer, to, to partner with a local brewery or, or in some cases, uh, coffee roasters or, you know, New Mexico state, I think does so for like green chili salsa and a couple other places, but you, you would reach out to some company and you'd license your school's intellectual property. And that's the official beer of whatever. And I remember it was, the school was Nevada. I had been hearing rumors that there was like going to be like some kind of Wolfpack pale ale or something. And I don't, e I don't even drink. I know almost nothing about <laughs> beer, but I'm like, well, this is a business story. So let's file some open records requests to get some, you know, see some correspondence between licensing, licensing agents and, and let's see what we can learn. And there was a bunch of stuff here about beer and I don't even know where it is in my computer somewhere. I didn't, I never ended up writing the story, but I also got the initial project proposal from CLC, the, the collegiate license corporation to Nevada. And I've later got this confirmed. It was sent to everybody that specified, hey, here's the game. Here's what systems the game's gonna be on. Here's what they originally planning to release the game. Here's what we're gonna do with NIL. Here's how the licensing works. Like that was the initial first huge bit of information. And the internet's ruined our brains. So we kind of forget that this stuff is, is like three years old, you know, in the beginning of this project, but, but I got it. And I was like, all right, this is way more interesting than beer. This is my <laughs> new thing, right? So once I saw that, and then I, you know, I, I, I filed a gajillion other requests better understand what are the job titles at the schools that handle this? Who are the people at CLC? Who are the people at EA? You know, what kind of information is being shared? And so that's why if you look at extra points of the last two years, that's where the majority of my coverage has come from. And I do a lot of open records reporting for things, other things other than this, but there, there was that. You do that long enough, then EA starts to finally return your calls. Because at the very beginning, they, they didn't want to talk to me at all, which I, I, I understand. They're not used to talking to nosy reporters this early in video game release processes. You can't foil with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But brother, you can definitely foil with Georgia Southern. You can foil with these <laughs> other schools, right? And after you do this for a while, then they're just like, okay, let's talk, right? Because like, let me give you some context behind that PDF so you don't get the wrong thing. So now, yeah, by accident. I can you know, comfortably state I've got people at a bunch of different schools. I've got people I can talk to with many of the NIL licensing and, and sponsorship companies that work in this world and at multiple places at EA. I like video games. Video games are, are a hobby of mine. I clearly I wrote a computer game, so like that stuff does matter to me. But I don't want to be a video games reporter. Um, and and this has just been a you know a, a fun little kind of niche to dig into within my regular beat. But like. There's a lot of people that seem to think I work for EA or I used, I, I've gotten DMs from people. Like I literally got one today, like, Hey, can you help me get a job at EA? I'm like, no, uh, I've had people ask me if I could get them unbanned from Madden or like these other things. I'm like, I, I'm my brother in Christ. I'm begging you to read like more than one thing. 
I, that is not what I do. <laughs> I am the guy right. that writes about um, your NIL collectives fundraising efforts, not the guy that's going to get you uh, on band from Madden. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, weird, man. as we kind of wrap up here, just totally off the wall speculation, if nothing else, I'll throw you mine out first. If I was to guess who the cover athlete is going to be here, I think I'm going Shadur Sanders. I think, it, I, I think that's who I would have to speculate or, or guess. Uh, who's a guy like just random? Who Who is somebody that that uh, you wouldn't be surprised, I guess, to say uh, ends up being the cover guy. I, th- I thought Nick Saban for a while had some some uh, some juice, but now that coaches aren't going to be in the game, I feel that that would be a little bit weird, although he's not on the sidelines anymore. What I can – I feel bad about like openly speculating because there are people that are going to YouTube and share this video and they're going to – ignore the the speculating part and be like, Matt Brown says so-and-so confirmed. No. So like, <laughs> that's why I have to, I have to over communicate because I've been burned by this before. What I think I could say is one, I'm pretty confident there's going to be more than one cover athlete because I'm pretty confident there's going to be more than one cover, whether that's regional covers or whether that's a standard and deluxe edition, right? That, which has become mm-hmm. more standard in sports video games. Sure. I know for a fact that EA is going to release a version of this game that costs more than $69.99. So there, you know, that would open things up. I'll tell you, if it, for an outside-the-box suggestion, it, it would be somebody who's not a current college football player at all. Um, it, it would make sense to do one of those because that's something EA has never been able to do. That's a different contract. It would be expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard people in and outside the company speculate that one option could be a cover with all of the Heisman winners between when the last game was released or, or people that might have been on the cover had that not been there. Uh, I've heard uh, talk of potentially having a mascot be beyond the cover, which was done as a regional cover. Uh, I want to say in like one of the 2009, 2010 versions, there was a mission. There was a Sparty uh, mm-hmm. edition. Um, if it were me, I would look at putting fans on the cover of, of one of them because the, you know, that's the, 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 the genesis of why this is returning. That's a major theme of this particular game or is the fan experience and what makes the pageantry and immersion of college athletics different from college football. And that's the, the people that paint themselves funny colors and hold up game day signs and do all that stuff. But that's just me talking. Um, who's going to be on the cover is like a Fort Knox level secret. It's things that people at EA do, <laughs> who are working on the game do not know the answer to right now. Could be Sanders, could be, you know, Quinn Ewers, it, it, it could be Carson Beck, it could be somebody at Ohio State, it could be like nine different people. That's legitimately not something that really matters that much to me, but I get that it matters a lot to other people. Hmm. I would just say, do not limit your speculation to just the top 15 preseason Heisman poll candidates. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, expand that potential pool. That's awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hope to have you on again soon. Before we let you go, uh, tell us where, where we can get everything that uh, that you're writing and, and where we can find you on social media. Yeah. If I learn anything new and, and when I learn, hopefully when I learn more things about this game and about future game projects, the first place I'm going to put it is going to be on my newsletter, which is at extrapointsmb.com. Two of those a week are free. Two of those are behind an $8 a month paywall. Uh, it also includes a lot of stuff about the the business and the industry of, of college athletics. Um, so I'll, 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 you can find all my old coverage, all my other reporting and everything there. Uh, I'm also on Twitter uh, at Matt Brown EP. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And uh, we hope to have you again soon. Okay. Thanks for having me. If you're an EA Sports College Football 25 fan, there's not a name out there bigger right now as far as the reporting goes than Matt Brown. If he says it, it's pretty much gospel at this point. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of reports come out, and he's typically the first and and well ahead of everybody else uh, whenever it comes to uh, the news and, and things going on. Very well tied in over there at EA Sports and a fantastic uh, addition to the podcast here. Very excited about this episode. So. Uh, Let us know what you guys think about that. That's going to wrap it up for us tonight. We appreciate you guys so much for listening in. Remember, if you like the show, please consider uh, giving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes uh, and and over there at Spotify or wherever you're you're, uh, taking in your podcasts. And this is going to be on YouTube as well. So if you like it, please just hit the subscribe button. 
share this and, and like it and, and let us know in the comments what you guys think some of the things that you may want to to hear about in future episodes um we we, we do read that stuff and we do we try our best to get back to everybody uh, on those so if you do that just just let us know and and uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can but for now uh, that's going to do it for us this is the in the game podcast i'm brian clinton and we will catch you next time